Breaking news, Columbia Green Federal Credit Union just saved our member $105 a month on their car payment. That's no surprise, CGFCU helps our members save thousands. Wait, thousands? Yep, we have fantastic rates and flexible terms. We save our members by refinancing autos, boats, campers, and even credit cards. Apply today to see how much you can save. All right, welcome back to the Press Box, presented by Columbia Green Federal Credit Union. This week we have uh, Hudson basketball coach Sean Briscoe coming back with us. But before we get to you, we want to talk a little bit about Mike Davis's big fight in the mm -hmm. UFC. Uh, impressive performance overall. He it came was. out with a loss, but it wasn't. He wasn't dominated. He wasn't beat up. It was a good fight. He fought uh, Sadiq Youssef, mm -hmm. who in himself is a heck of a fighter. Incredible fighter. There were five fights at night, yep. and I think by all accounts that was the fight of the night. Yeah. I mean, the two superior athletes locking horns, and, and they put on a show, didn't they? I mean, it, it, it was amazing. The uh, They were 10-point must system mm -hmm. scoring rounds, and uh, uh, they, they gave all three rounds, the judges, to uh, Sadiq Yusuf. Uh, so the final count was 30 to 27. But right. again, even that doesn't indicate how close this was. It, it was a tremendous fight. Um, it's one of those situations where maybe... I, I, I can't get into Mike's head. It, you know, right. he's a fighter, and he he knows what he's doing in there. But you wonder if if maybe the the moment, you know, over overtook him a little bit because I mean, you have to come in. The, the whole point of the show is to come in there and press and and get that UFC contract. And and right. you wonder if that you know plays into the fact that you he comes in there and. Uh, and, and maybe feels he's got to come out spectacularly and, and, and win by knockout. Uh, and, and it didn't go his way, but, boy, he put on a show. Yeah, he definitely, yeah, he put, definitely on show. put on a show. And it's one of those things where you hopefully you learn from it, you come back from it, and you, you perform just as well. He didn't yeah. perform bad. Mm -hmm. He had a, a great fight. And I think we were talking about it off the air right. a little bit. Anybody that goes into the octagon, you have to give oh. them some kind of credit. Total it's respect. Not, uh, it's not, you're not playing, you know, chess or checkers out there right. you're getting hit you're getting punched you're getting kicked and it's a tough sport and they uh they listed him as, what was it a three to one favorite yeah. that yeah. they had um, mike listed as and i think again that that played into uh sadiq yusuf's hands i mean he saw yeah. that and said okay I, you know give let him be the favorite i'll be the underdog and i'll come out and shock the world but yeah. he uh, what a what an incredible fighter he is an incredible athlete um uh, really really uh the, the sweeping kicks uh yeah. that really took their toll on Mike, uh, uh, had him hobbling a little bit at the end, you know, the, those, those repeated calf kicks. But, uh, but again, you wonder if, 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 if the moment just, just, just made him fight a different way uh, than, than he's normally fighting because it didn't seem like he went to the ground attack yeah, as no, much as he would. Really he's a tremendous yeah. wrestler, uh, you know, and, and he got some, and, and again, uh, let, let's, let's be honest. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, he, he fell apart in here. I mean, no, he, he no, put no. on a very, very good show and uh, – you know, again, to, to, to use that old cliche about learning more from a loss than you do from a win, I think that applies here because, mm. uh, man, he, he realizes now he, he took this guy's best shots and, and kept coming, uh, yeah. but Sadiq took Mike's best shots and kept coming as yeah. well. So he, he realizes now the step up in competition, and uh, and if we know Mike, know Mike Davis, you yeah. know he's going to get back in there and, and, and work hard and, and get back and, 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 and get that contract eventually. I really Definitely. believe that. Yeah, and Sadiq was no slouch. He was 6-1 no. coming in, fought mm -hmm. some really good competition, so he, yep. was, he was a tough guy to go up against. And both of these guys had severe leg injuries. Yeah. You know, Sadiq could barely walk out of the octagon. Right. He Mike was on was, crutches. Yeah, Mike was stumbling around, sure. so it was a tough fight for both of them. So we definitely want to see some more of Mike coming up. He mm -hmm. should be uh, hopefully fighting again in the next couple of months if he doesn't have a medical suspension, which a lot of these guys get because it's such a tough sport. Personally, I don't think this this L, if you want to call it that, right. did anything to hurt his marketability. I think it no. might enhance it because he more people were able to see what he can do right. now, and he was very impressive. And uh, hats off to Mike and his team. They they, they put on a show. Definitely. Sean, I know you you watched the fight. Yeah, I did. You, you got me. Uh, you, you got me wanting to tune in last night when <laughs> yeah, I we saw you at the start of the game tell, telling yep. me about it. So uh, you know, I tuned in, and you know, definitely first time I've seen him fight. But you know, like you said, he obviously was going up against. A formidable opponent. Mm -hmm. If they're they're both looking to get UFC contracts, you know, it's not like right. he was fighting any right. slouch. And you know, it was it, it was an exciting exciting fight. And you know, as a coach, you know, you always tell your players you can definitely learn. You learn more from a loss than you do a win. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, hopefully, you know, he takes this and learns from it, and uh, you know, gets back to work and uh, you know gets another shot. I, I hope he does too because he I think he deserves it and I believe he will because again he did nothing to uh, to hurt his marketability I think last night. No, uh, no. Again it showed at, at a high level what he's capable of. I mean he, I, you know and I tell you what again maybe it's just 
the homer in me, you know, rooting for the local guy. But I, I think it, it, down the line, this could be a, a, a great rivalry maybe between yeah. these two. I mean, and if they mix it up again, I, hey, I'm not going against Mike in this one. I, no. I really think he's got the, 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 the talent and the ability, and he's going to come back strong. I think so. Now you just said summer league. How's Hudson doing over there? Uh, we're doing we're doing good so far. Um, we've um, six games now. Mm -hmm. um, technically five. We had a forfeit um, last week. Uh, Pine Plains couldn't didn't have enough kids. Mm -hmm. They couldn't make it. Um, so guys are playing well. Um, you know, we're basically summer league's kind of all about just getting the guys playing together, back together. Um, you know, after a long break over the you know the spring season, mm -hmm. so we get them back together, conditioning wise, running up and down the floor, um, kind of give them some freedom to play. Um, not a whole lot of coaching goes into it. Um, right. You know, we haven't had any close games really either, so I haven't really had to uh, <laughs> sure <laughs> to to get on the guys too much. Um, you know, last night was close at times. We struggled a little bit, but that's also good too sometimes and that was against Cooksocky Athens. Against Cooksocky mm -hmm. Athens, so it is kind of nice sometimes. For the guys to learn that they don't, if they're not at their best, we can still find ways to win. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that was kind of the situation last night. Now, you lost some key players from last year, but you have a very young team, a very talented team. This might be the best group coming through now that you've had. And that's saying something because you went to the state final four a couple of years ago. But uh, talk about some of the kids coming back. I know Daquan Griffin uh, was a first team all conference player last year. He's back, and uh, from what I've seen of him in the summer league, he's better than ever. Yeah, um, you know, like you said, we got we have uh, a young core coming back, right. uh, which is, which is nice because you know we were we did have some successes last year, so they were able to get some experience last year, you know, in some high level games, high competition games. Um, so that should only help us this year mm -hmm. with that experience that they have coming back. You know, like you said, Daquan, he's just a force down low. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I don't see too many teams being able to stop him. Probably the the, the the way that's going to happen is they're going to double and triple team him, which right. so he may not put the points up, but the mm -hmm. reason everyone else is scoring is because yeah. teams have to kind of focus on him in the paint. Right. Um, you know, we got uh, Noah Hedgepath coming back. He, you know, he'll mainly be running the point for us this year. Just a sophomore. Um, just a sophomore can, you know, shoot the ball from the outside, so that'll be a nice, nice addition. You know, mm -hmm. um, shooting point guard definitely helps. Um, got Levon, Levon Fernandez mm -hmm. coming back. Um, Leviticus Johnson, you know, those guys can, they just flat out play. Right. And every time I see them, I feel like they just get bigger and bigger. Yep. You know, I'm standing next to them, like looking up to them, saying, holy They're smokes, these guys just keep growing. Yep. You know, and like you said, with being so young, you know, mainly sophomores and juniors this year, you know, I think with the experience last year, um, the guys are hungry, you know, after our uh, loss last year in sectionals, you know, ball didn't bounce our way towards mm -hmm. the end, you know, almost had a nice comeback there. Right, you know, I think, yeah, against Shalma. I think the guys will be, uh, you know they're itching to uh, to get get back in the gym and get playing and you know win some basketball games. Uh, you are undefeated in the summer league. Catskill is undefeated in the summer league. It seems like once again it's going to be you know, I don't <laughs> want to say a two team race because Maple Hill is always good and there's some solid teams in the Patroon as always, but uh, it just seems like uh, every year you, you just look at the calendar and, and although the names may change, I mean the, the the teams just keep on winning. Catskill and Hudson, you figure it's going to be that way again this year. Um, I would imagine. I mean, I think it just you know both of our both our of our schools and, and programs just you know kids just love to play basketball from yeah. both communities. I mean, that's kind of you know the staple of both communities, and it has been for a long time. And um, you know, I see them being you know good again this year. They yeah. lost some guys, but they were also bringing some key guys back too. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of in similar situations. Um, but you can never count out you know having to take a trip up to Maple Hill and, yeah. and play yeah. and play in that sure. gym. Tough place to play. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, you can never count out, you know, them or, you know, you know, you never know Rensselaer sometimes, you know, who they're going to, who they're going to bring in. Sometimes you get a couple transfers that come in and, you know, it, you don't want to ever sleep on anybody, but, right. I, you know, looking at it, you know, I would say, you know, us and Katzko are probably somewhere near the top, you know, if not at the top and, you know, hopefully we can uh, continue that trend. Now, getting away from the league, you've got a very challenging non-league schedule this year, I understand. Yes. Um, so non-league games this year, uh, we're playing uh, Bishop Gibbons early on in the season. That's on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, they were, you know, pretty decent Class B school yeah, last year. I think sure. they were around eight seed. Mm -hmm. um, so they're up and coming. Uh, we have them. We're playing Green Tech at home yeah. on a Friday night, so that should be so fun, that should be, uh, should that should be amped very up. Athletic sure. team yes, always. very athletic. Um, so they're going to be – they'll be tough. Yeah. Um, so we got them playing Waterville Elite. We're going back up to Glens Falls Civic Center again this mm -hmm. year for the Sunmark Shootout. 
Um, that's the Saturday before um, the Super Bowl. Okay. So we'll be up there again playing Water Valley. So that'll be good. Um, they're going to be, you know, one of the top B teams again this year. Yeah. Well coached. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be fun and exciting. And then we round out with Voorheesville at the end mm -hmm. of the year, who's always well coached. Yeah, always. Mm -hmm. and, and they're a scrappy, tough team. So that's a, it's, a, it's a nice leading up to sectionals because it's actually our last game of the year. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, you know, good tests against uh, – you know, a, a tough team. They, they they play scrappy. No question about it. But uh, now, talk to us about your summer. I know, uh, in addition to coaching uh, the base, the basketball team, you've you've coached some baseball, little league baseball yep. team. Your son Mason the Great, Mason Briscoe, <laughs> playing on on the SNF uh, Technologies team. Uh, and if I remember correctly, that team won the minor division title in the Hudson Little League this year. They did. They did. Yeah, it was that. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you were there. You you got yeah. to you got to see it. I was uh, a little excited. Oh when yeah, I, I was. I, I got some. I got some excitement. So than in basketball. It, yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's definitely different. It's a different feeling when you you're coaching your own son as opposed to other people's kids, and sure. you know, just to uh, to be able to experience that with with your own with your own son, and mm -hmm. you know, we we struggled a little bit in the beginning. We were down, and you know, so you know, try to just you know keep the kids focused and energized and engaged, and and uh, you know, they just kept battling back and you know ended up being able to mm -hmm. come out on top and and it was just like pure joy and excitement I like at tell. that age you know it's yeah. the, it's not a it's not a job to them there's no sure. pressure to them sure. they're just having playing fun. having fun it's yeah. just a game yeah. um, but when it was all said and done you know and they got to get their trophy yeah. then then it's like real and yeah. you know they realized they were playing for something so yeah. it was it was a lot of fun absolutely for some of these kids it's the first chance of winning a championship right. or winning a trophy and it's, it, yeah, it's, I, I've always loved Little League myself. I just just watching it from afar and just seeing the kids doing their thing. I mean, it's it's, it's pure, as they say. Yeah, you know, it's it's, a, it's fun. A lot of fun. Getting back to basketball, though. I mean, the the summer league season's about to wind down. You've got the playoffs, I believe, uh, the the week of August seventh, yep. um, and the championship that later that week. But uh, what's in store for Hudson High basketball after that? Once school opens up in September, do you guys have a, a plan? I know you've played in the the Bard College Fall League. Yeah, sometimes. I'm not I'm not sure if we're going to go down there again this year. Um, we may just do some more in-house things, right. um, you know, or we'll maybe we'll find some games here or there. Mm -hmm. um, Tyrone's got plenty of connections for sure. uh, <laughs> for that. Um, so I'm, we're not sure yet about the full Bard League. Um, we're going to start um, doing some conditioning and weight training and stuff here the month of August, starting next week. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do that with the guys. We got a bunch of equipment come in. We got some donations um, from from some donors for the basketball program so we're able to get some equipment we have you know all kinds of things we got parachutes we got ropes we got um agility ladders all that kind of stuff so we're gonna you know be able to you know focus a little bit on our conditioning strength training sure. you know outside of just playing the game of basketball and then once school starts you know same thing after school we'll get the guys in the mm -hmm. gym you know once or twice a week doing things like that um you know just trying to get ahead of the game right. when it comes to uh November. You know, when November rolls around, it's a lot of X's and O's and, yep. you know, getting the guys ready for games. So we try to get as much of that conditioning, get them ready as much as we can, you know, prior to November. And before you know it, the season will be on us. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> now, a couple of your guys are coming back to the area, Mike Alert, Danny Folds, both coming back to Columbia Green. What do you think those guys bring to that team, and, and why would, would people go out and watch these guys that are playing at home again? Um, I mean, for anyone who watched uh, – Michael Alert play. They just they you know they know what they're getting, um, yeah. and, and obviously that's what uh you know Coach Brian Smith out there he knows he's he's just getting a pure leader. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean his leadership intangibles are just uh, you know they just speak for themselves like yeah. that that alone above anything he does playing wise is just going to help that team in my mind, um, you know and he's just he's a floor general he knows how to lead guys he knows how to you know be a leader he. Um, he's going to be a high energy guy, good defensive player, can shoot the ball, mm -hmm. you know, run an offense, get up and down the floor. Um, you know, I think he's going to he's going to do great things for for that program. And I think you know we'll see him put up some good numbers at, at Columbia Green. And then you know, Danny Folds, he's just a high energy guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he knows how to play the game. He he brings that energy whether he's on the bench or on the floor. He mm -hmm. he brings energy to the team. You know, he can get to the basket. He's going to give you that highlight reel dunk. Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, we all remember the probably the play of Hudson High School basketball ever, <laughs> the steal of of Gerard and Talk to have call. the uh, to have the tenacity to want to even throw it down and and, yeah. hope, and know you're not going to miss it because yeah. we needed the two <laughs> yeah. points. You know, it was just you know those are the types of things that he brings to a team mm -hmm. and 
you know, I'm looking forward to uh, both of them playing in the area again and, mm -hmm. and uh, hoping that our schedules work out so I can get over there a yeah. few times to watch them play. Sure. Because, um, you know, I definitely miss having them on the team and uh, being around those guys. So hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll do some big things and, and uh, kind of resurrect that program, get them back yeah. to, uh, you know, competing in the playoffs and, mm -hmm. and making, making a nice run towards a championship themselves. No doubt. Definitely. And we look forward to uh, hopefully you guys making a run towards the championship. Yeah, that, that's, too, the, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> that's um, you know, I think we, we, we definitely have some pieces right now that, you know, like I said, we should be able to compete for a Patroon Conference championship. And mm -hmm. if the pieces fall the way that, you know, I think they can, you know, hopefully we're, you know, at the end of the year we're competing to uh, for a spot in Glens Falls and get into that final four. Right. You know, and, and then once you get there, any, anything can happen. You know, mm -hmm. as we know from a couple of years ago, you know, we were probably – we were seen as the underdog going in there as, you know, mm -hmm. with the four teams that were left that year and, mm -hmm. you know, the chips fell the way they did and, you know, we ended up coming out on top. So, I you know, I think we definitely have the pieces to, uh, to, to compete. We have the length. We have some speed. You know, we got guys that can finish around the rim, guys that can shoot the ball. So, you know, we definitely have some, uh, some ingredients there to, <laughs> to make a nice little push. No doubt. Definitely. Well, we thank you for coming by, and I'm sure we'll see you Absolutely. again yeah. in a couple months. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the Press Box, presented by Columbia Green Federal Credit Union.